So like working on a pattern like this, um, figuring out how to make it fit better, always is just like a little bit of tweaks. Uh, his shoulders aren't fitting super, super great. Like I could kind of pull it out, see what I want there. But I'm getting like this weird wrinkle back here that's unnecessary for the look and feel of the thing. So honestly, a lot of the times, I already have a seam down the back, which means the seam will be preserved no matter what I do. And so right about here is where his, the width, like the most wide part of his shoulders is. And I can honestly just add a point there. That means that I want that to stay the same and just bring this in a teeny bit. And it's kind of making it fit just a teeny bit better. I would smooth things out with curves, but it's not important that I show that right now. Like adding curves is the easiest part about everything. So it's this curve guy right here and just like boop. And I'm just making stuff round. I'm not doing anything special or fancy or complicated at all. I'm just making it slightly round. And that is the last step, um, just because of how complicated it is for uh, to manage those curves and to think. You just wa you want to be nice to your computer if you can. But yeah, so. That's me adding a bunch of curves. Um, they're not perfect, but they're going to smooth out a lot of the issues. So that's like going to be a little bit smoother. This, you would want to also add a kind of curve so that it, if you were to bisect the body, the curve of the back would be like kind of straight up and then round this way. So you want this part of the curve to go pretty smoothly from straight to curve. So right about there and it'll just make that transition less of a pucker. Still don't like it. Maybe it's this guy. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Ooh, or. Yeah, so curves is the last step. I still have everything applied as leather. So it's like super voluminous, like really, really big wrinkles. And I could change the preset. I select fabric and I'm going to go and change the preset to be anything I want it to be. I think if it's an olden time thing, like cotton, wool, and this will change the fabric density and the density of those wrinkles, um, how fabrics behave. These presets are really all you need to arm yourself with. If you want to get super interestingly technical with stuff, you can change a lot of fabric information. And it's everything from like how much this direction has stretch and how much this direction has stretch. And um, so the weft and the warp, it's all this stuff. And it just gets super duper complicated and interesting at the same time. Yeah, so it's like stretch weft, warp, sheer, buckling ratio. Like you can noodle with all of those and figure out stuff that you want, but honestly, like introduction to the program, just stick with trying different presets. Like, like this is with a knit, so like kind of like a sweatery, uh, that, mm, you know how when you have a sweater that's like striped, but that's the fabric, that's what this kind of is trying to behave like. So it hangs and uh, it doesn't wrinkle so much as it just kind of droops, which is maybe what you're chasing and that's really interesting. Or you could do wool, which I like how wool behaves because it's like, it's smooth wrinkles and really kind of interesting. But, or if you want like hella wrinkles and you're all about it, the most wrinkly one, in my opinion, I think is, is it the nylon? Let's find out. They changed some of the names because there used to be like um, like a windbreaker and the windbreaker fabric is just like super micro wrinkles and all that stuff. And it was really interesting, especially if you were chasing like a very wrinkly pattern. Yeah. Let's see how many wrinkles he's got. Also like, 
it's a symmetrical pattern, but you can kind of noodle it around asymmetrically. So your character, like if they're a painter, they've got one sleeve rolled up. Can you imagine sculpting all of that in ZBrush, but also having the shirt look like it's the same shirt on both sides? Not only would this be like the same, but it'll also simulate properly for both sides. Very exciting. So that's like ni nylon chiffon, which is like really thin, almost paperweight fabric. Um, Haha, -ha, this is where my knowledge of fabrics comes into play. You're like, what the fuck is a chiffon? Chiffon is really lightweight. It's like the, it's like a gossamer silk. So it wrinkles, small, tight wrinkles, stuff like that. So you don't have to know what the fabrics are. Just click on stuff. And if you like it, great. If you don't, move on, find a different one. But um, so when I'm working, I'm always using leather because I want stuff to be as stiff as possible until I want those wrinkles because I want the program to be fast. Agile, like it's always like work in my big forms, work on my volumes, work on my fit, work on my shape, work on my curves, uh, work on my positioning and wrinkles, and then I add um, more density to the simulation. So, shirt, pretend I like this shirt. Like he's poet romance novel, this is perfect. If I'm satisfied, freeze it. Um, I'm going to want one part of a costume to interact with another part of a costume, so. It's great, but the simulation, when it's trying to solve for a lot of different things, it can get out of control. And um, I'm trying to show you a little bit of the troubleshooting end of things. Like, things will go kind of wild in this. Don't be afraid. It's not going to mess up your stuff. Honest to God, just hit undo. You might, and then, like, kind of rearrange it. It's a very, like, massage the cloth program, and um, it's pretty cool. So I'm going to move this up and out of the way. And I'm going to make pants. So pants, the general pattern that you use for pants, I think I saved a picture. I think. I didn't. Haha. <laughs> nope. We can actually just super quickly Google, like, pants pattern. Because if you're confused about something, don't, don't, like, spend a bunch of time laboring over something that the, that the whole world has already solved for you. And you don't need very much information. Um, to be able to accomplish something really cool. So I'm honestly, God, just Googling pants pattern. I'm going to the image results, and I'm pulling up the very first thing because I just need a reference. I'm going to get the fit according to what this character needs over here. I don't have to have measurements and nothing. That's because it's all digital and amazing. All right, save image as so I can open it up. Desktop. All right. Pants. Super basic, right? So this is actually cutting off the image, like the butt of the pants kind of go up. Oh, there we go. If I move my mouse, it's going to, so the, this, this side, I'm reversed. That side is the back of the pants. You need a lot of room for the butt. And the front side is the crotch area. Um, a lot of times in Marvelous Designer, I'll see people opting for a drop crotch pant because getting pants to fit in those really difficult seams like the butt and just the overall, like just the front, like they get so many wrinkles that are really kind of unseemly and you're like, those pants look awful. Um, it's really stressful. So they're like, you know what, let's just drop the crotch. I personally like drop crotch pants. I'm wearing some today. Um, it's a really cool style and it's really nice and it has its place, but it doesn't always have its place. And don't let a pattern scare you away from what you actually wanted artistically. So we're gonna try to accomplish a pair of just normal pants that fit, and then we're gonna change the pant to be artistically something that we would prefer. So I'm basically gonna kinda do this. Um, I'm gonna have this over on my screen on here, but that's what it looks like. All right. So pants. I'm gonna do the front first, and um, I'm gonna do it on this leg. So. The crotch kind of goes to there, and then this is the underside of the crotch leading into the knee. And these are the only points that I'm applying, and then to the foot. Oh, that's going to be way too long. Whatever, I'll fix it later. Uh, Marvelous Designer is rad. Like, it's saying, this is where your leg is, right there. And that's kind of amazing. And then the hip. No matter what, everybody's a little bit wider at the hip butt area, so you just want to kind of bend it out a teeny bit, lead it up into the side of the hip, and then connect it back to the front. Um, I already know this is going to be too long, so I am going to 
grab that and move it up. That's just because I know already, so I'm just making sure I can see my foot. Um, I don't actually know how this is going to fit on the character. You don't have to know that right now. We're just building, we're just putting something into the system to then simulate it. So that's kind of like the front of a pant. Uh, I don't want to draw those lines over again, and I also want certain distances to be exactly the same. So I'm just going to copy this and uh, mirror paste, not symmetric paste, just mirror paste. These lines, which are going to be sewn together, are the same length. That way I'm not trying to make a lot of fabric go to a smaller fabric and I'll get like weird wrinkles. Don't worry about that. Like it's the same and it's the same and I want it to be the same here and I want this to be the same. But because of how a pant pattern works, this is going to have to change a teeny bit. Um, so the number changes as I go and that's super fine because honestly, I'm going to click on this, and it says 241.2. I'm going to click on this guy, 248. So I'm going to split. So you know that split that I used uniform? I'm going to make this number 241.2. Pretty sure that's what it was. Let me check. 241.2. Hell yeah. And so that is exactly the same width as that, and I'm just going to delete that guy. So that's just generally the angle. And then you want a lot of butt. So I'm giving him kind of a lot of butt. That's just in case. That's room for growth. And then this is a little bit longer. Once again, this, so 392.1, 400. Let's split this. 392.1, 1, right? Maybe, pretty sure. This is just me getting super specific. So this needs to match this, and this needs to match this, and this to this, and this to this, and this to this. However, these only have to match themselves because the front seam of the pants go together in the front, and the back seam of the pants go together in the back. So it's all good. I'm going to position those using this guy. Um, I had my tech dude set this stuff up for the captain and the panda, because it's, it's like a rig. It'll read your rig, or you'll assign points. It's a pain. It's great, but it's, it is a pain. Don't get me wrong. Boop. So that's kind of wrapping it already. And you can kind of see how the panda is going to work already. So I'm going to have that placed, but not sewn yet. And I'm going to Control-C, Copy, and then Symmetric Paste. Um, it doesn't have to be with sewing. We don't even have any sewing in yet. Pants. Uh, this is still a little bit long for me now. All right, sewing pants. Knowing what to sew where is kind of weird. It's really nice to have this stuff referenced because um, then you can see what is or is not being sewn together. So we know that this to this, because it's the front of the pants and the under front and then the butt and then the under butt. So I know that, well, I know that's working. Those lines are lining up. And then this leg to this leg. So this is the outer seam of the pant. So this is along the side of the leg. That's this guy. And then I'll sew it on this side so you can see it. And then the inside, that's this to this, this to this. This is kind of where sewing comes in handy, but um, because this is really clearly representing, it's like, I just want these to be friends. Uh, it's a little less intimidating than actually having to sew. So this is like, <laughs> I thought he was going to have a lot more butt than he does. But because I froze the shirt, it's actually trying to solve for around the shirt. I'm going to, and I do this all the time where I'm like, oh, I'll figure that out later. So I'm going to actually shorten the shirt so that it's just pushed up and out. No. There we go. Pushed up and out of the way, like a crop top. Super sexy poet, man. 
mostly I just don't want, I just don't want stuff to interfere at all with each other. And because everything is just in super angular stuff, I'm only concentrating on the volume of the fabric. I'm concentrating on like the volume. Let me switch it back to leather. And honestly, I could add a bit of an inflate. Um, this is my workflow. This doesn't have to be your workflow, but I want to eliminate. I don't want my computer to think too hard, and I want to concentrate on certain things first. So I want to concentrate on the volume. So he's wearing clown pants. They're like balloons. And I obviously have way too much up at his butt, but that is super easy to solve. And because they're symmetrical, they'll both solve at the same time. So that's a lot on his butt, not enough at his belly button. Um, is the crotch enough? The reason it's so pointy is because it is points. I'll smooth that out with like a really nice curve in the end of it all, but don't worry about that yet. That's not, that's not now Jessica's problem. That's future Jessica's problem. So simulate that. It's actually a little bit too wide for him. Like you can see, actually another really cool tool in this is you can look at the pressure points of your fabric. Like what, um, what, is being stretched really far to accomplish something and what has a lot of volumes, so like what actually fits your character and what's kind of strangling them. Um, so this is kind of like a heat map for uh, the, the how much tension. And uh, it's underneath this little fabric bolt thing here. And I'm just gonna go back to monochrome surface, but I could go to, and if you hover over it, it's called strain map. This allows you to kind of decide, uh, yeah, I want the cuffs to be strained because I want them to be like super tight around his wrist, but I don't want anything else. And it can also help you problem solve some things that probably won't simulate really well in the end of it all. So the strain map, um, you can hit it with Alt-7, <sighs> but you know, a button's nicer because you're like, I did the thing. Anyway, so his pants, it's kind of like a basic shape. And that was just from me eyeballing a pattern I found online to get kind of this basic shape. I am going to spend a little bit of time adding a curve to the front of the pant and make sure that that fits really well so you can kind of see what it takes to make a pant fit nicely and not have to be drop crotch if you don't want it to be drop crotch. Um, actually, I think a waistband is going to do me a, a world of good after I make it a little bit skinnier. So I'm going to just get this fit because it's like super wide. And I'm not going to take these two points in. I'm going to tuck it in from this point because these points have to stay the same distance and I just don't want to deal with that. And I think actually the crotch is still just a little bit low. So... To lift it up, I'm gonna make the waistband and then I'm gonna drop this versus bringing this up. Um, bringing this up, well, shit, let's, let's try it. This should work. So I just selected everything, uh, selected it, hit shift, and uh, ugh, give me those points. But it kind of messed up my, my curves, and eh, it's all right. Yeah, I think that's actually fitting up in his business a little bit better. And remember, I have an inflate. This is all just like ballooned out so I can just get and concentrate on the fit. Actually, this is a little bit dumpy. Um, the point that I chose is a little bit too low. So I'm getting kind of like this square butt versus like a fitted butt. So I'm just going to take this point, lift it up a little and then add in my curves. Um, if you don't know how to diagnose like what's going on, just move stuff around a little bit and figure it out as you go. Like I know what I'm looking at, but I've had practice. I want you guys not to be scared of poking and prodding your pattern until it works for you. Um, save often. Don't be afraid to like make a mistake and then hit undo. Like all of this stuff will work out just fine. Still so dumpy. Come on. All right, let's see, what can I do? Probably just that. Better, warmer. All right, I'm adding a waistband. 
Uh, waistband is going to actually end up being really, really nice. I am going to make it two pieces, but I'm going to put a, po a point in the middle so that way I can just sew this to the waistband, this to the waistband, this, this, this. It's going to be easy. So waistband one, and I'm going to select the bottom line, which is what I'm going to attach to the pant, and I'm going to split, uniform split, done. And then waistband two, I'm just going to copy and then mirror paste. And that's going to be the back, which I'm going to flip horizontally and then put back there. I'm going to get it pretty close. I'm not going to use those arrangement points, those um, the dots that go around the character for this. I don't need it right now. This is just a waistband. It's pretty easy, I hope. All right, sew those guys together. Yep, hits. Sweet. All right, and because I made those points, the front is going to go to the front, and the front is to the front, and the back. I'm going in the middle of the back, which means I have to, so it, it crisscrossed on this, but just remember, like, my little line is towards the center, so this line needs to be towards the center. Oh, did I F it? I might have. Oh, see? I put them on the wrong pieces. So this guy goes to this guy. Nope. Wrong again. This guy goes to this guy. Ah, oh, better. Yay. Super simple. Pants. So that's kind of like the waistband. This is going to let me get the fit of the pant in the crotch area just a little bit nicer. Um, I want that to fit nice. I don't want you to be only making drop crotches because this scares you. So I think it's got still a lot of room. Take this down. Sim. Pull up. All right, I'm going to take the tops down. So I'm going to select this guy and this guy. Shift, hold down. I need this to be a little bit longer. Meh. 74, 77, 75 would be good. Oh, there we go, 74. It's good enough better. So I'm constantly like noodling and fitting. Yeah. All right. And I'm going to solve that pucker. That's just a matter of adding in that curve. So uh, I'm going to zoom in closer so it stops. Everything kind of snaps now. So if you zoom in closer, it'll stop snapping. I just want a really gentle curve going into that flat part so that it smooths that out. And then a super gentle curve. I usually don't add curves into later. We'll worry about the knees in a little bit. Mostly I was just worried about that. Like you can see that the knees are like straight line, straight line. You just add in curves to really smooth that stuff out. But I was worrying about the fit around the hips. That's like the hardest part to get on a character. So this is a super basic pant pattern. This is going to be your life. And once you get stuff fitting in the hips, the pants can be anything. And in fact, I want my po <laughs> I want my poet dude to be wearing ridiculous pants. Um, so you can do the same thing, where I'm making the pants extra long so that they got a lot of vertical wrinkles, which is really cool, or I can make them extra wide so they have that kind of balloony shape. Um, I still have the inflate, so everything's pushed out to its limits. I'm only working with volumes at this point, so I'm going to make everything long because I just want tons of wrinkles all up his leg. And... Um, this is going to solve poorly. That's going to be really mad at me, 
but I'm gonna run the solution and I'm just gonna pull them up. Don't be that mad. Come on. Oh, it's gonna figure it out. It's like, see how mad it is? It's just like, eh, Jessica, why? So you know what, I'm gonna undo a couple steps. So I'm gonna get to there. I'm going to, and this is real fancy, I'm gonna run my sim. I'm gonna pull it up, pause the sim, and then I'm gonna try to pull up the other leg before that one falls. <laughs> ah! Whatever. And then I can add the length, and it will not go through the shoe. I'll just go and add, I'll add a little bit of length at a time. And this is just me trying to get the best possible simulation out. Like, I don't want the sim to be mad at me. Pause. And I'm just gonna add a little bit at a time so that way it's, it's updating its solution just a little bit at a time. Um, and this is just to not fight with stuff because like, it can get real frustrating if you're fighting with it. So just like be kind to yourself. But this is giving me a lot of like cool leg wrinkle. Because it's uh, pushing out, it's honestly just gonna push all the volume elsewhere. But this means I'm gonna end up getting some really, really solid wrinkles in the knees and in the ankles, which I definitely want. But I think I'm satisfied with the volume and shape and the fit of the pants. So I'm gonna remove pressure. So it's with my pattern pieces selected because you could individually alter each one by its lonesome. So with all of them selected, I'm gonna set this to zero. I could even make these like shrink wrapped to him by doing kind of like an in an, a negative number and it'll suck it into his legs. Uh, is it possible to hold up the thing that it one side? Um, so you mean like to noodle it around and then freeze the simulation? But um, that means the, well, I'll just do it. So to freeze a pattern, you gotta select it over on this side. So select this side and then freeze. And then, so you're saying this is what I should have done when I was lengthening my thing instead of, yeah, you totally can. But, <laughs> super smart. Yeah, no, you super can. I, I do a lot of like freeze, go, freeze, go, freeze, go with the simulation so that I can just like, um, if I want to throw something over a shoulder, but not have to like sew this side to this side, I, and I just freeze, pause, rotate, freeze, pause, rotate, and just like eventually throw it over the shoulder. And but yeah, and then pause my simulation, unfreeze, and then add length. No, oh, that's super smart. Dang it, I should have thought of that. <laughs> totally did. No one except for you guys knows. But, um, and that's with uh, the inflate inverted. So it's like sucking to his skin. Actually, ha kind of how fabric behaves when it's wet. Um, and it gets a whole different look. You're getting crazy different details to the, um, to the wrinkle patterns to this. So this is kind of like, you know why I like jeans when they're wet? There's such a pain in the butt to get off. This is why. Um, but just kind of like sculpting in the details that you want until you're at a point and then I prefer not to keep inflate on at all. Um, I use it just as a tool for developing volume, so I'm gonna set that to zero. It's kinda chilling. But yeah, pants. Pants are super exciting. But um, so that's with like adding length, a lot like the sleeve when you added length, and then volume is just the other way around. So I'm pausing my simulation. And notice like, I've isolated the fit up here and I'm not messing with anything above this point. I can raise these points, and making them into bell bottoms. Ooh, that's not actually gonna be very attractive because that's gonna get real tight. Oh well. Yeah, let's go back up, run the sim, cool. Ooh, let's add volume there and there. 
and then add volume there and there. <laughs> Some Scooby-Doo shit. I love it. But like, once you have a basic pattern of pants, you can alter that pattern. Yeah, ma'am. Yes. Um, okay, let me just show you that really quick. I was gonna do some internal pleat with a different thing. All right, let's find the right tool for that one because I've got a plan for another one and what I use is slightly different. Let's see, maybe top stitch? Nah. Mm, internal line. So, okay. How you approach this pattern specifically is going to be different. So I am going to, I'm going to freeze one side. And we're going to freeze his waistband as well because we're just going to concentrate on one side because this is going to get, this is going to get complicated. But you asked for it. All right, I'm hopefully, I just hit right click and then remove link editing. I think that's what turns off the symmetry. So now if I edit one, I'm not gonna be editing the other. Oh, thank goodness. Thank All right, sweet. So it's remove link editing. It used to be like right click deactivate symmetry or undo symmetry or something like that. So it would turn off the symmetry when you're no longer needing it. So I just right click and um, with the thing selected, right clicked, and then, um, so like applied linked editing, this one, because it had symmetry on it, it was disabled, linked editing. So I disabled it, so that way I can add a pleat to this side and not to the other side. Pleats are usually just in the front of the fabric, so I am going to set my butt aside and the front of the fabric, I'm going to copy this and just paste it. So now I've got two, of that pant. I'm not going to touch my simulation at all, but I am going to add a point up at the top and add a point down at the bottom on, ooh, actually, hold on. I want those points to be identical. So copy, paste. This is what I do. This may not be the perfect solution, so I delete one half of that side, and I delete one half of that side. Bring this guy back. Sew those two sides together. And then on the seam itself, this, I can actually add an angle to the seam so that it's as if you had pressed it. So with the edge selected, I go to Is it this one? Nope. This one? Yes. Shoot, it's like 45. I'm going to have to noodle with this just to find exactly what the right seam uh, angle would be. But uh, I have to re-sew some things. Because this is the front panel. So this guy, he's going here. And this guy going here-ish. You know what? Undo, undo. I'm just going to split that line again. I just want it to be even. Split. Uniform. Yeah, man. Uh, so if you're doing a... Uh, I'm, you're, oh, mm, you're getting ahead of me. No, you're going to find out. So don't even worry. There's a pleat tool that's amazing and didn't exist before. So I've done this by, by scratch before. So pleated pant with like that ironed seam in front, that's the seam. And then I can actually adjust that on the fly. Like if I don't like where that is exactly, I can adjust it. So I think it should be a little bit more this way. 
Yeah, so I can even add like another point in the middle and really adjust the volume. But that's what I would do to apply that seam. Or I would just sculpt it in ZBrush, depending on what you want. Like this is to get a very simulated where it'll sim that seam and it'll recognize that seam the whole time. Or if you're just making a character that's in a pose, just do that in ZBrush. But that is how I would accomplish it. And I think I can noodle with that angle a teeny bit more. But that's going to be like a, how does this feel? Sim. Yeah, so you just noodle 60. Yeah. So it can just get really exciting. And so you just adjust with the seam angle, and that either pushes it in or pushes it out accordingly. So you just adjust the angle through the whole gamut. Anyway, so pants. Um, let's see, what am I? <laughs> I'm just going to get into it. All right, so this dude, all of his stuff. Do you feel good about that? Because I'm going to delete it. I'm going to, no, I'm going to delete it. Yeah. So what I wanted to show you was how to make a kilt. Um, I think that sculpting a kilt would suck. Uh, royally in ZBrush to do all those little folds and do those folds and solve them and then also have the volumes of the fabric going up and around. And also is going to show you some of the really cool power within Marvelous Designer. It has a pleat tool. It's like amazing, but it's slightly complicated. So there's a couple of steps. Um, I'm going to start off with a waistband. This is just kind of giving me a solid basis for building everything on. And um, because fabrics are really cool, I'm going to add a texture, and I brought some special textures in, and you can totally guess what I'm going to put on. So I have a tartan. <laughs> I'm stoked. Now, the color, when you're applying it over a texture, it's just applying kind of like a multiplier on top of your kilt color. So shoot, what is my family's? Eh, it's ugly is what it is. They're all sort of. But anyway, I can add kind of like a kilt pattern to it. Um, that's kind of going to obfuscate what I'm doing. So I'll switch over to a gray shade later, but this is really fun. All right, so waistband A. Copy. Mirror paste, not symmetric paste. B. Uh, flip horizontally. Move in back. not rotate. The gizmo isn't nearly as friendly as like a Maya gizmo, but it's still pretty sweet. All right, waistband. Yeah. So, because kilts wrap around, um, you cannot create a kilt in Marvelous Designer how you would wear a kilt in real life. I don't know if you've ever worn a kilt or made a kilt from scratch. I have. They're super fun. They're amazing. And it's just a huge, long piece of fabric that you painstakingly fold and tuck pleat. And then you lay down in like a large tartan burrito. You wrap it around yourself, and you belt the middle, and then you stand up. And you get like all this complicated folded fabric and stuff. But to accomplish that in Marvelous Designer, I tried it how you traditionally make something first. And I made like a long thing that was up the back of him and wrapped it around. It did not turn out as planned. So for Marvelous Designer, I just broke it down. I'm like, what are the fundamental pieces? And it's the pleat bit, but the pleat part goes almost all the way around the back of a person. So my back seam of my waistband is going to be longer than my front one. So my front one is going to come in, right? And I'm going to noodle this, because this is what I'm going to use for measurement. I need to lengthen my back. Boop. Yeah, so this is going to be kind of where the pleat starts and ends. The front panel of a kilt is that flat, straight. All of the pleats are all in the back and the butt and the sides. So this is sort of signifying, like, this part is where it's going to be the flat fabric, and this part is where the pleated fabric is. So I got this pleated guy. Click on the bottom line right here. Right-click, split. 
we're doing a uniform split, and we're just going to go for eight uniform pieces. So this is what we're going to attach our pleats to. Then we're going to make the nine yards of fabric. So this is basically our kilt. I'm going to flip that horizontally. I'm going to bring that behind. Kind of there. So this is what we're going to pleat up. And I'm going to take the top line, so selecting the top. All right, this is, just trust me, it's three for every segment of there, because it has to bend in, in, and then to the next one, and then in, in, and the next one. So I'm going to divide this into a uniform split of 24. So 8 times 3, 24. So I'm getting all of that. Now I go, and I'm going to select this line. This is how I'm setting up internal pleat lines, is I right click on this line, offset as an internal line. Um, because there already exists one line, I just need to do 23 more. 23, all right. And then, oh, I, hold on, let me cancel. I need to find out exactly this number. 112.2, all right. So right click, offset as an internal line. 23, and then 121.2, 112.2, sweet. And it lines up perfectly. So all those internal lines are now lined up exactly to that division. So that's, uh, it's, it's good enough. It's just pleats. So these are two new tools in Marvelous Designer, and they're amazing. There's the pleats sewing tool. This didn't exist before. I used to have to take and sew this guy, and then leave this one to sew up to there, and also sew to this, and then sew this guy. And then it was bananas. And now they just do it automatically, because they're angels. So I just select my waistband and go from the start to the end. And the, here, from the start to the end. Son of a bitch, it's so easy, I love it. So it's, it's doing all of that work for you. Ugh, you guys don't know how lucky you are if you start in Marvel's Designer, this version. And then um, hit simulation. It's a lot of fabric. So it's gonna give it a chance to think. Now this is just fabric uh, pleated in how it's sewn, but not pleated in how it's ironed. And um, I actually think I'm dealing with kind of a large volume of fabric. Uh, pause, I'm gonna just um, grab the overall piece, scale it this way a teeny bit. I think that'll help with how it feels. But you do want a lot of volume with a with like a big kilt. Um, and because the waistband is getting pulled down, I'm just going to pin that there and pin that. It's just pinning it to him. It's just going to troubleshooting you. You don't want to have to be fighting against gravity. All right, that kilt. And then because everything is really kind of loose down at the bottom, it's not that really clean pleat shape of ironing. This button here helps you automatically adjust the angles of every single edge as needed to how the pleats are folded. So pleats fold, I click on that. I click on my first line, go to my last line, and double click. I can do knife pleats, box pleats, or accordion pleats. Um, I've tried all of these. Technically, a kilt is this one. Um, but how that ends up looking in Marvelous Designer isn't actually really all that nice, and how you sewed it isn't quite that. Um, but we can show you. And it's really just deciding the outside fold is 0, the inside fold is 360. You can adjust these so it's not quite so drastic. Like you could do 10 and 350. And it's just going to iron everything for you. And then all you got to do is just kind of like poke stuff around. But the way it's folded here 
and the way it's sewn here are two different pleats entirely. Um, so not as useful. So I just hit undo a couple of times, going to my pleats folding thing, clicking there, double clicking at the end, and I'm just going to do box pleats. That's actually ended up looking the best. Um, it's not 100% accurate to what a kilt is, but it looked the nicest, and I care about how stuff looks. You might want to labor with how stuff actually is and go there, but this, this ended up having like a kilt that I really appreciated. So I'm going to right click, reset to 3D arrangement, and resolve. But it just felt better, just a lot cleaner. And uh, the most beautiful kilts are the ones that are that perfect, perfect pleat. But because it's Marvelous Designer and you're chasing these wonderful fold shapes, keep it clean here and then add in complicated wrinkles and, and pins and stuff like that to like muss it up some. But that's just like the butt of the kilt. Once I'm kind of happy, like you can see stuff is a little bit tangling and solving on itself right in here. Honestly, you just kind of hold let it relax, and then drop it. It'll get better and better with time. But it's those um, wrinkles and stuff that end up being really, really delightful, too. So kilts are awesome. I'm going to do the front panel. And so, well, where, where is it? Oh, there it is. This guy is just going in front of here. Yep. And I can cheat, like normally kilts overlap over and overlap. Um, if your character, you want it to like step through the kilt and have the leg show and that's part of the performance and that's like the really cool moment that you wanted, then you'd only sew one side and pin this side or tuck this side in or sew it just to the edge. Or you can um, do what I'm gonna do just for looks sake. Like I don't need to see that leg peeking through and I can just sew this side to this side. And then I'm gonna sew this straight up to that. And it's a little bit wide. By the way, this, is, this fabric is still reading as leather as its preset, and I can set its preset over to wool, which is what all this stuff is made out of, just to get just a nicer pleat. Now, one of the cool things about kilts is it has all the pleats in back, but it's really just a big piece of fabric that's been folded in half and has another top going over it. Now, originally, when I had first made this, I made it so the pleats were super long, and I just made a belt, and I belted the character and had everything flop over the top, and it looked awful. Um, and I was like, okay, so it can't work like real fabric. How can I make it work regardless? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything and freeze it, because um, it's going to get angry at me, because I'm going to ask a lot of it. So I'm going to freeze this because I'm pretty satisfied with where that's going. I am going to select this piece, the big old kilty bit. I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste. I'm gonna unfreeze that so you can actually see it. But there's that one. Move it down. And I'm gonna actually reset to 3D configuration so that and I'm going to attach this to the top of the waistband. The waistband is the representation of a belt for the character. And I want to do that belt in 3D over in ZBrush. I don't want to do that over here in Marvelous Designer. I tried doing a belt in Marvelous Designer and with the kilt, with all the different folds and pleats and fabric, it kept constantly trying to solve either in front of or behind the belt, no matter how far away the belt was from everything. So I was just like, oh, that's a nightmare. And it's easier to solve in Marvelous Designer and I'm already getting all of the cool uh, I'm already getting all of the cool stuff in Marvelous Designer, and it's easier just to make the belt in ZBrush. And I'll show you. But the waistband is representative of the belt. 
So I've got this pleat half, and I want to attach it to the top of my belt. So I'm going to take that edge, uniform split, and uh, divide it into eight bits. So this guy, oh, son of a biscuit. I got to delete all the sewing bits. Um, Cause you can't pleat fold over a pleat fold in the sewing stuff. So I'm just going to delete it. I selected this sewing machine and this is the edit sewing and I'm just selecting stuff and I'm just going to delete it. Cause I'm just going to redo it and all that. I should have, I just copy pasted and it's like, no, you need this sewing. And I'm like, no, I don't. All right. It's really easy. Just click, delete, click, delete. All right. Sewing machine. I'm going from the top to over here. From the top to over here. Is it happy with me? Because it looks pissed. All right, hold on. This one to over here, and I think it's this one to over here. Yeah, that's better. Space bar. Yeah. Oh, it's so satisfying to watch it simulate. And that's kind of like the top of the kilt. Calm down. Ugh, awesome. And then the best part about kilts is having a long piece of fabric from one side come up and over the shoulder, all Braveheart style. So this is kind of one of those simulate pause, simulate pause, simulate pause to get it up and over. But I'm going to take you on that journey. All right, that seems all right. So I'm gonna grab, copy paste this guy, grab him up there, uh, reset to, well, I'm gonna unfreeze it. I'm gonna reset to 3D arrangement. Whoa. So this is going to be kind of the fabric that comes from the kilt here, up and over the shoulder, like across the chest, all Braveheart style. So. I'm going to sew this to this, right? Nope. Yeah. And then if I hit simulation, that's just going to hang out. So I am going to slowly crawl this up his body because it, it just gets angry at you if you do it weird or wrong. So, boop, pause, grab that pin, delete it. Simulate, hold, pause. <laughs> Such a weird janky process, but it works. I'm gonna pin that there. And then I'm actually going to make this stuff longer. Yeah, that's totally going to work. It's so mad at me. Let me undo. Hit space. So honestly, one thing I can do is I'm like, oh, I really want to make that longer, but I don't want it to be so mad at what I'm doing. So I'm going to undo that seam. I'm just going to let those guys go. I'm going to lengthen it. Just let it hang out. Oh, come on, play nice. Grab hold, pause my simulation, and then I'm gonna just sew. So usually they take the corner of the fabric and then what's coming in from behind the kilt, it comes up behind and then they have this big old um, clasp thingy that would be super cool to make in ZBrush that holds everything together. So we're just gonna get the fabric to the point that it's necessary to artistically do cool stuff on top of it over in ZBrush. So 
this, I'm going to kind of massage it into a cooler configuration. I want to add a belt over it. It's going to get mad at me. I'm going to get this 90% of the way, and then I'm going to add a belt and have it get mad. Um, I might turn off all the pleats, because those are the angriest part of the simulation, are the pleats. They just want to solve every which direction. And um, fighting with a program is like the least favorite thing. So pause, um, freezing the pleats, and then having the belt come in over his shoulder strap is like what I want. Because I wanted to form that shoulder strap in a way that has the bunching, the runching from the belt, and will stylistically have a lot of really interesting points. But yeah, so that, I'm going to have, I'm going to pull it over. Oh, I'm such a cheater. Pause my simulation. And then I'm going to just pin it to him. I love how um, talking with a lot of the guys here this weekend, everything we do, it's like we always feel like we're cheating. We're like, this is just how I save time. This is how I make it work. So I'm pausing it. And I'm pinning it. because I kind of like what that's doing, but I only want it to cover one half of his chest. So I'm going to keep my simulation going. I'm going to kind of put this in the spot that I want. Yeah, about there. And then I'm going to pin it. And this is what I do on a dress form in real life, is like I just pin stuff and then sew things to get what I have pinned. It's like. Oh, it's so cool. I'm doing straight up all the romance novel for you guys, and you guys just enjoy. <laughs> Has anybody watched Outlander yet? It's, it's all kilts and battles. Yeah, so. I actually feel pretty solid about that. It's got a lot of pins stabbing straight into his chest, but it's giving me a lot of interesting bunching up here that naturally is how the fabric would bunch, and I didn't have to sculpt it. I just pin and go, pin and go. That feels pretty sweet. I feel as if this fabric is inside out. And it is. Oh, that's why stuff was being super dumb. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's fine. All right, sweet. So then I'm going to bring it from the back side. And that's this edge that comes up and meets, because it's just one long piece of fabric. So I'm going to. So basically, one of these guys over onto this side. So I'm going to pause my simulation. I'm going to grab him. I'm going to copy him and paste him and just put him over here. Now, it's going to give me that totally already 3D stylized. Sometimes you want that, because it's already kind of solving a couple problems that you might have had. Let's see how well that even just fits onto my character to do what I want it to do. Oh, it's so pretty. I love fabric. You know what? That's actually pretty solid. Um, I know that I'm going to have to get this portion up and over his shoulder, but I like the width of this shape as it is. So I'm just going to rotate it that way a little bit. Oh, I'm going to freeze that plate. Do you see how those things are intersecting? That's about to get really angry at me. Uh, so I'm going to select that guy. I'm going to freeze him. And I'm going to let this do all of the work here. So I'm going to pin this to his shoulder. And then I'm going to sew this edge to this edge. Yeah, that looks right. I'll worry about down there in a second. But I want this to meet this, so I'm grabbing, pausing. Oh, it is getting mad. Well, I'll deal with one problem at a time. So I'm just going to pin this to there, because I want these guys to hang out a little bit. So I might actually end up cutting the tip off of each of those and then sewing them together just to make my life easy. All right. Run my sim. Pull this out. Oh, man. It's just like, no, let me figure it out. But like, all I'm doing is just pulling it out. 
helping it along. Don't you mess up my front fold. I like that one. I'm going to freeze this. Like the moment I like something, I'm like, stop it. So the top is behaving really, really nice. It's just having a problem connecting to the inside there, logically. So I might actually have to, oh god, this is going to suck. Uh, I might have to unfreeze the pleats and kind of iron that out. What do I want to do? You know what? If that's really angry, and all I need is something back here going down into that, this could actually drop really nicely as like just a continuation of the shoulder and just pretend like that half of the kilt was just up and tucked. So I'm going to undo that seam because it's just going to be mad the whole time. And it's not artistically gaining me anything. All right. It's OK, fabric. Come out. All right. I'm going to have to like noodle with the pleat on the inside in order to get the ending part of that fabric to be pointing out at the moment it's pointing all the way in. So the fabric would have to solve for a 360 degree turn. So one thing I could do is I could delete a couple uh, points over on this side so that it's the ending face is that and I can figure that out. But considering we have 15 minutes left, I want to export this over into ZBrush, OK? So let's pretend like I solved that shoulder. I really want to show you just how to take it out of here and over into some, a package that you're more comfortable with. And that's more important to me than anything else. So I'm going to un pause my simulation. You can export it as an OBJ. So you can export it anywhere. Because um, the point count's pretty high. Um, you know, Maya kind of chugs, and that's OK. But I'm going to do as much of the solving over on this side as possible. So I'm going to unfreeze everything and hope it's all happy with each other. Oh, thank god. Normally, if it's like mad, it'll just start as if it was being sucked into a kilty black hole and just like on itself. But it's, it's playing pretty nice, and I'm getting some solutions that are really interesting. So that's like my kilt. I am going to pin that piece down just because that's going to look sucky in the ZBrush. So you can export fabric thickness. All right. So pretend I am satisfied with my kilt. I'm going to select everything and export. So I'm going to export as an OBJ. Um, there's animations that you can do. So like if you were to animate wind blowing, you can export those animations. But that's not my thing. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, sometimes when I'm exporting stuff out for my rigging team, I'll make planes in Maya or in Max that I then line up to my character. So Sylvanas' cape, they needed a static standing still shape, so it all draped flat. They needed one where it was still embracing how bunched up it was around her shoulders and into the hood, but they needed the long part that they were going to animate be as flat as possible, so I built a kind of ramp and then laid the cape on that ramp so that it was as flat as it could be at a perfect 30 degree angle and then pinned it all flat. So it still has the same uh, point count, vert order, and all of this stuff, which is really useful for, um, for our rigging team, but is flat and easy. And then I also export it out. You can export your pattern as an OBJ as well. So that's exporting out all of its flat objects. And all those things combined give the rigging team what's needed for the fabric to move and sim appropriately. But uh, I'm going to approach it just as a sculpting artist who's super selfish. I'm going to actually, because it was playing nice in the simulation, I'm going to uh, reduce the particle dis distance to give me a more dense mesh. Um, and I think it's going to. Cool. All right. File, export, OBJ, selected. Sometimes if you have a whole bunch of stuff in scene, you don't want to um, cute. All right, your export settings. Thin, it's a single polygon. Thick, it's two-sided polygons. 
Um, unwelded or welded, that's like if the seam points come together, you can, if it's unwelded, it's going to be this is the pattern, this is the other pattern, this is the other pattern. But welded, which is a default in thickness because it wants to give you something that's thick all the way around, everything's going to be welded together, but that'll change your point value. Um, because we're taking it into ZBrush, thick, totally preferred. Um, if I was taking it as just a pattern for simulation, thin, single-sided is actually preferred. So I'm going to make it a single object. All the patterns, it's going to be in millimeters, whatever. ZBrush is like scale dependent. I could save it with the texture files, whatever. Oh, by the way, all of my flat pattern, those are my UVs. Like my UVs are already perfectly laid out for this object. So though this object is wildly deformed, my UVs are that flat shape. And that means that the pattern of the tartan plays over that really complicated fold really well because everything's laid out flat. It's smart. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, I think this is all I actually need to do was just single object and thick. There's a lot of settings. Um, there's the scale stuff. Sometimes if you imported something as in inches and you want to export it in inches, you just select it here. Um, I'm pretty certain that this is appropriate. Y is up. No, maybe I want Z is up. Right? Yeah. All right. Oh, I should export my dude. All right. Let me export him separately. And so I'm hitting export avatar. And then I'm just turning off patterns. Avatar dude is getting selected. And he's just going to export just so you can see what he is over in ZBrush or if you were working on something. So ZBrush, import. It's on my desktop. I got my avatar. Oh, wow. There we go. Trying to do ZBrush with a mouse is exciting. I've got a pen here. I'll, I'll use it in a second. Kilt. It's so nice. I love it. I think it. No, that's right. Right? No, that's flipped. That's fine, but it was probably in one of those axes settings. Whatever. It's still good. Oh, no, that, that's fine. That's totally fine. So I've got my kilt in. And um, if your workflow isn't uh, all about the dependencies of things having to be simulated and you just wanted to make a really cool character, a game character that you're then going to um, make a low poly mesh and bake this up onto, you can totally use ZBrush to just quantify. So I'm going to duplicate it. So I got my original guy. I got this one. I'm going to remesh. No. I'm going to Z remesh. <laughs> Real mesh. I just wanted to show to bring it over in. Let's see how well the Z remesh did. Now the Z remesh, you're going to lose a lot of your cool data that you had, which is why I'm keeping this guy over here. So like this guy, he still has his UVs are laid out really awesome and all that. And I can just smooth it and just get further and further crispness, although the internal segments. No, no, it's fine. Should be fine, right? I think stuff is. I had it set to welded, so it should have welded. Eh, whatever. I'll figure that out. But Z remesh automatically welded everything, and then this is what I would end up using for a game mesh to get all of that like interesting data out. What the hey? What the? Uh, it's just solving it really wonky. To be fair, kilts are crazy. You know what actually might be good? Single-sided. Let's make my life easy.
I might get better results out of ZBrush if I'm not doing thickness. All right, thin, weld those dang points. Yep. And then I could add thickness within ZBrush. I could add thickness over in Maya. Like, there's a lot of places that you can add thickness. I just want things to behave as intended. And I think the thickness was tricking it up. So everything is in that like star point mesh. That's just how it's solving fabric really nicely. Um, append, kilt. Oh, does my kilt have my dude? You son of a. I'm just auto grouping. And it's just doing it by patterns. Your polygroups are just going to be the patterns. Kilt. All right, duplicate. So this is the thin one. So this one I can smooth, and it should smooth really nicely, and it should be friendly. Maybe I need to double side some stuff because I'm getting the back side of fabric. That makes sense. I'm getting the back side of fabric too. So just double. Yeah. And then I can like go in and sculpt specifically as needed, like anything extra. Or I can go back to this guy. I'm going to double-side him, too. It was the double-sided that was tricking me. I was like, where is stuff? There we go. And then I'm going to smooth it once. And then I'm going to use Z Remesher. Delete lower. I'm going to do same. And it's just going to give me clean, sculptable topology. Um, Downside, you're losing your UVs. Upside, you can go get your UVs from the other thing. You can use what you exported out of uh, Marvelous Designer as your initial base mesh. You could reproject the UVs out of the Marvelous Designer onto this one. There's a lot of things you can do for your production workflow, but if you just want to make a really kick-ass character with cloth on them, like this is a great place to start and um, get some really cool results. So now. I hit Control F and just not F. All right, Shift F. So this is like all quads. It's pretty happy at you. It's going to sculpt pretty well. And then you can smooth, smooth. And you're already getting like some really beautiful and insane detail right out of the box. Like my kilt didn't take me all that much time, and I've got a killer kilt right now. Um, and put it on a guy. And then bring in and develop more elements uh, decide how I want this to be solved, you know, and like, you know, add a different object to create like what exactly the brooch is for that. But uh, it gets really, really fancy, but I wanted to show you the Marvelous Designer side of the workflow, how it can maybe work for you. Uh, I hope this was really helpful. Thanks so much for sitting through a long thing of me sewing romance novel character outfits, <laughs> but uh, thank you.